Hi everyone, my name's Graham. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. So the topic of this talk is it's quite simple really. Um, I just want to share what I consider to be my two favourite adverts of all time. How I got to that topic is, is really... When I was asked to provide a talk, I had a couple of things rattling around my head. Uh, they just weren't working when I when I put them to paper. So whenever I have uh, something that I need to think about or a, a challenge that I need to, to work through, I'll listen to music. And at a time like this, I know a lot of people are listening to music that's familiar to them, reading books that are familiar to them, watching movies that are familiar to them. So there's that element of um, familiarity and, and nostalgia. And it was when I was listening to music that a, a song came on that um, I absolutely love. And it's its use in what I consider to be my favorite TV ad of all time. That's really kind of driving what I want to ramble on about for the next couple of minutes, if that's okay. Now, I work in B2B. Uh, I've spent 20 years within uh, B2B marketing. And there's a lot of good work and a lot of good thinking happening within that space. And I probably should talk about that and champion it. However, for the purpose of this talk, I, I want to kind of step out of, of that bubble and, and to, to some extent my comfort zone as well. I'm not an expert on what it is I'm about to talk about. Um, so feel free to turn off now. However, um, these are two adverts that I, I love and I, and I simply want to share them. I don't have any deep insights or any forecasting or any trends or, or anything like that to, to impart. These are simply two things that I hope um, you, will, you will enjoy. They, they may provide you some comfort during um, these, these strange times um, and some element of familiarity. So um, please bear with me while I uh, while I ramble on about these things. So the ad, the ads themselves, they're quite old. Um, they date back to 1995 and I think 2008, 2009 for the second one. And whilst they're 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 quite distinct, uh, they do have a number of familiarities uh, or similarities, should I say? So. Um, they both don't have any dialogue. They are both visually um, excellent. Uh, their aesthetic is is on point. Uh, the production value is incredibly high, and they have um, an excellent soundtrack. They are also both directed by two iconic directors, and probably most importantly. Um, as I've been watching these adverts quite a lot over the last couple of days, they, they're excellent at telling a story. They're not really talking about specific, um, specific features in a way that you might get today. The, the, the features that are mentioned are, are, are related to the heritage um, and the brand. And I, and I think that's, that's really important and that's part of the appeal. The, the, the only difference between the two ads is, as far as I'm aware, one is, is, is infinitely more famous and has been significantly more awarded than the other one. Um, but other than that, they are two fantastic ads. So coming back to this the sort of theme of familiarity, as I was thinking through what it is I want to talk about, this track came on um, that really sparked the idea for what I'm, what I'm really rambling on about. But it's um, the track is called Novelty Waves by Biosphere, and it is used in what I consider to be my favorite advert of all time. It's what drew me in to it, and it's a song that I continue to listen to on a, on a pretty regular basis. The advert is um, Drugstore by Levi's, um, released in. 1995 it's an absolute gem as far as i'm concerned it was directed by michelle gondry who uh, would later go on and, and work on music videos with the likes of 
um, the Chemical Brothers. He's done work with Daft Punk, and he's directed two uh, feature films. Um, oh, he's directed more. He's directed feature films such as Sunshine for Spotless Mind and Be uh, Kind Rewind. Now, this advert came out at a time which I suppose I would consider to be um, sort of almost at the height of Levi's power in terms of their, their advertising. So every advert they produced was an absolute classic. And seemingly every single song that they released and used as part of the advert went to number one. Uh, this track didn't. <laughs> It, uh, it actually peaked at number 51 in the UK charts. And um, when you see the ad, you might understand why. So here it is. Drugstore by Levi's. So yeah, so that that is my favourite advert of all time. Um, think about it. I don't know when I found out Michel Gondry directed it. I mean, 1995, I don't think there's any way I would have... I certainly wouldn't have known then, and I'm not sure how, how I would have found out. However, I was able to find out um, who provided the soundtrack, and I remember that because I bought it on cassette in our price in my local high street at the time. And I don't know whether I did some digging around and just happened to, to find it or whether it just had the sticker on the front that said, you know, as featured in the Levi's ad, I don't know. But that's that track has stuck with me and that's the track that pulled me in to that advert. And it's a track that I continue to listen to time and time again. Um, it stands alone really well. And if you think back to that period of Levi's, you know, there was like number ones coming off every advert, whether it was Stilt Skin um, or Babylon Zoo or Shaggy. Um, and yet this was a total departure for them. You know, electronic music just, you know, at the time when they just seemed to be using old soul and um, rock soundtracks they then dabbled with electronic stuff um and, and they they would revisit it later at the you know around 98 99 i think it was with the with the flat eric and the music of, of mr wazzo but that that track has, has stuck with me um for quite a while now in, fa in fact i remember talking about that advert when i was being interviewed at levi's as i was coming out of university um, at the time, they were supporting uh, local, well, UK bands doing UK tours. Um, I remember one of them was Jimmy Requi. I can't remember who else, but Levi's were all over those those programs. And um, they were interviewing someone to join the marketing team. I went along, and we talk at, we talked at length about music, and I talked about that advert, uh, and I remember we we discussed it, um, and I thought I'd nailed the interview. 
and then I got a phone call the following week saying I hadn't I hadn't got it, and they were very you know they actually phoned me, which is rare nowadays. But um, yeah, they gave me some good feedback, and then they they delivered. They they then told me that they thought it was really amusing that um, that I turned up for the interview in a suit. I was like, oh, what the? So um, you know, lesson learned. But anyway, back back to back to the advert. It's it's not just the music with that. It's had a huge influence on on a number of things for me. Um, you know, it's just if you just look at it, it's 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 beautiful. Um, it's got it's got that killer soundtrack. It's got I mean the visuals are excellent. Um, you know when when he walks up to the the door of the chemists and it provides that silhouette, which offers you the glimpse into the store. Um, it just looks phenomenal. The production value is just on point and it feels hefty and weighty um, and, and kind of pure, just like pure advertising, pure storytelling. And that influenced me in a, in a number of ways. So, you know, not only the music, so, you know, I discovered Biosphere and I still listen to Biosphere and I was able to discover other bands and within that genre and um, I was able to go back and look at other artists that I perhaps dismissed. Um, and in fact, even today, you know, I still have a number of playlists on Spotify and because of their algorithm, they're going to be serving me up other tracks based on, on that. So it, it, it's continued to influence me. Um, I think secondly, photography. I did photography at GCSE as part of my GCSE art degree and I didn't do anything for a couple of years. And that made me look at photography again, particularly black and white photography. And when I started to get into photography quite heavily again after university, it was with a big emphasis on, on black and white. Um, and then finally, my career. I was about to embark on a business studies degree and at that point, I knew I was going to be um, wanting to focus on on marketing, not necessarily the advertising discipline, but marketing. I knew that's that's what I wanted to do. The second ad I want to talk about is a little bit different. Um, it is for Gucci, and it features the track "I Feel Love" by Donna Summer. Or at least an interpretation of I Feel Love by Donna Summer. And um, it's directed by Chris Cunningham. Now, I might be very biased towards this advert because I have been a fan of Chris Cunningham's work for a very long time. Um, when I look at the music videos he's done for the likes of Aphex Twin and Square Pusher and Bjork. And even if you look at the material wealth advert he did for for playstation you know i was well aware of of him and um, his his productions so when i heard that he was doing an advert for gucci i did sort of wonder you know how's how's this actually going to work how's this going to play out um you know they seemingly felt like two totally different worlds um and you know i i, I did wonder whether anyone within the creative team at at Gucci had seen the the music video for Aphex Twins Come to Daddy, which is it's pretty brutal. It's you know it's not it's not a relaxing experience, um, but nevertheless, um, it works. And in fact, Gucci had actually worked with David Lynch in in the run up to to appointing uh, Chris Cunningham to work on this. Um, however, I think the execution is is absolutely. Spot on. So here it is.
Gucci, the new fragrance. I love that advert. So it's funny, so someone commented on um, on YouTube that it should be illegal to view any of Chris Cunningham's work and anything less than 4K and on the base of that advert alone, I you know, I have to whole wholeheartedly agree. I mean the the drugstore ad looks phenomenal. Um but this one is it just it's a it's a different I know it's a different aesthetic, but it's just I just find it so pleasing. Um and I think you know a big part of it is is the music. You know, it's that sort of 70s 80s sort of disco sound that's been totally muted um and then it's kind of eph ephemeral and kind of almost cold like the advert itself I, I find quite cold uh it's haunting yes because of the uh, that interpretation of i feel love but it feels cold so it's haunting and, and melancholy and actually it kind of makes sense because um I mean, my my sort of assumption is that that perfume ads are that there's romance in there, but but sort of reading up on this advert, it's it's clear, and certainly um, Chris Cunningham's been told that the you know romance isn't in in the Gucci code, so. That sort of makes sense. It then makes sense why Gucci approached someone like Chris Cunningham to to do that um, that ad, and their work with David Lynch as well. You know, it, it it sort of makes sense, and that brand code is then is then fed through. Um, but I just think it's such a it's such a wonderful ad. I, I I love it, and I I don't know to be honest whether the industry regards it in in any way. I don't. If memory serves me right, it didn't stick around for very long. Um, but anyway, and I, and I think, you know, it's the, the track as well. I, I remember hearing that track for the first time and just thinking, oh my God, if that track went on for six minutes like that, I'd be so happy. Uh, it doesn't. Um, the full track itself isn't, I, it's, I, I'm not, not too keen on it. Um, the first 60, 90 seconds is using that ad are, are lovely. And then after that, I'm, I'm not particularly interested to be perfectly honest with you um but interestingly uh chris cunningham did did fly over to the states and um he actually got donna summer to to re-record the vocals for that track which i thought was which is something so um yeah so that's that's the second ad i, I hope you i hope you liked it as as much as i do i you know, I just, I just think it's a, a lovely piece of work, a lovely piece of art, and both those ads are just wonderful pieces of art. You know, um, and the Chris Cunningham one, the the Gucci ad, the production value is amazing, the aesthetics are are wonderful, and the soundtrack is is so pleasing. Uh, yeah, I love it. Um, so there you have it, two great ads. Sorry, there's no insights, forecasting trends. Um, I'm just rambling on about two ads that put a smile on my face and I hope they put a smile on, on your face. And that was really the objective of this talk was just to, to share those two things with you. And, you know, at a time like this where there is uncertainty and a lot of people are, are struggling with things, maybe the last... The last few minutes have been a, a welcome distraction for you um, and I hope you enjoyed the talk and if it means you donate some money to the Samaritans then my job's done. So I want to thank you all for taking the time to uh, listen and watch and um, take care. Thank you.